Greetings, it is Max so Diddly here, and today I'm here with another C Sharp tutorial to be that A in your coursework or exam. And today we're here with validating a password. So this could be used for a login form in your C Sharp or Unity project where you have a login field. So the user would type in a username and a password. But to save time checking with the server with the login details, you want to make sure the user inputs a password which is valid. Or let's say you're making a sign up form and you want the user to have specific requirements met for their password, like must have a special character, uppercase, lowercase, number, a certain length, then we can do that. So let's get right into how we would do it. So firstly, we've got a static Boolean function here. It's called check password. We're going to pass in an input which is going to be the password for user inputs and an integer called minimum. This is going to be the minimum amount of characters the password has to have to be valid. So firstly, in our function, we're going to have some booleans, has num, has cap, has low and has spec. Basically, they're all going to be false. And when we actually check through the password, we'll be changing these to true if the conditions met. So has num would become true when we find a number, has cap becomes true when we find a capital letter, has low for lowercase, and has spec for a special character. And char current character is just going to store the current character we're looking at in the password. So before we actually check the password, let's just check it's the right length. So if input.length isn't greater than or equal to minimum, return false. If the password isn't greater than or equal to the minimum length, then it can't be valid even if it has all of the other requirements. So we can return the false and not bother executing the rest of the code. After that if statement, we have a big for loop. So we do int i equals zero, i less than inputs.length and i plus plus. So we're going to loop through every character in the string, which is the password the user has inputted. Current character equals input i. Basically, get the current, get the character from the string which corresponds to whatever the value of i is. So we can loop through every character in the string. Then we're going to do if char is digit current character, then we'll do has num equals true. So if this character isn't a digit, we're going to go on to the next check. Is upper, and then we pass in current character, and that would set has cap to true. Let's say um, this isn't an uppercase letter either. We then go on to the next else if statement, which is to check if the character is a lowercase. If it is, we put has low to true. If it's also not a lowercase, we're going to check if it's a special character. If it's a special character, which we can do by checking char.isletter all digit, then put a not before it. If it's not a letter or a digit, it is a special character, so we can do that little check. Uh, if this returns um, false, as in if the current character isn't a letter or a digit, then has spec is set to true. After we go through those checks, we do one final check. If has num and has cap and has low and has spec is met, we return a true. Why do we return a true here and not, let's say, after the whole loop? Let's say we have a password and it meets all the requirements lengthwise already because we already have established that here. Let's say the first four characters already tick every box. There's no real point looping through the whole password if that's all the validation we need. And after the for loop, we're going to do a return false. The only scenario where we get to this return false is if it gets through this whole loop without triggering this if statement, implying that there was a character which clearly didn't meet these requirements, or multiple characters which didn't meet the requirements. And that's it. So we're going to call our function here, console.writeline, check password. Then I'm going to pass in exclamation mark A, B, O, 8, and then a bunch of fives, and a 10. And we're going to print this out so we can see the result. Let's click play. As you can see, it returned a true. It, um, it matches the minimum character requirement. It has a lowercase, an uppercase, and numbers, and a special character. 
let's shove some random stuff on the end so it's clearly longer than 10 characters. It's No, it's clearly bigger than 10 characters. As you can see, it works. Let's go for four characters and let's see if it works. As you can see, it doesn't. Let's remove a special character and then add seven A's. As you can see, it doesn't work. So, you can see it works. So thanks for being a great audience, be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you want to see more. If you got a request, leave it in the comments. If you need help, leave it in the comments. I'll try and help out. I am quite busy, and a lot of people have been commenting recently. That's great. But if you can help each other out, that would also be really helpful. And, yeah, thanks for being a great audience. I'll see you next time.